the Pokemon anime is now 25 years old, which means Ash and Pikachu have graced our televisions for quarter of a century, which is absolutely mind-blowing. In that time, Ash and Pikachu's journey has spanned across multiple seasons, from the original series, to Advanced Generation, to Diamond and Pearl, to Black and White, to X and Y, to Sun and Moon, and now, to Pokemon Journeys. And when there's that many series of the Pokemon anime, it's totally normal for people to have different favourites. Not everyone agrees on what the best series is, because it's totally subjective. People look for different things in the Pokemon anime, and that influences their judgement of what's best, and what's worst. So in this video, I'll be ranking every series of the Pokemon anime over the last 25 years, from worst to best based on nothing except my personal opinion. This ranking list is based entirely on me and my preferences. It'll be influenced by how much I love the stories, the characters, the Pokemon, the battles, the comedy, and generally, just how much fun I had watching the series. It is almost a certainty that my rankings and my opinions will be different to yours, so please prepare yourself for that and don't take it personally. If my rankings don't match yours, that's perfectly fine. As a matter of fact, I think it's awesome. Imagine how boring life would be if we all had identical opinions. So rather than getting angry at my opinions, I'd much prefer you to comment your personal rankings below. That way we can discuss your opinions, and I can enjoy your opinions, just like I hope you'll enjoy mine. And to be truthful, I genuinely like every series of the anime, so even the ones at the bottom of my list, I still really really like. I just like certain others even more. In this video, I won't be including Pokemon Journeys, because it's still ongoing, so it's kind of impossible to rank it. And also, I'll be splitting the original series into Kanto, the Orange Islands, and Johto, since to me, they honestly feel like three different series. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy videos like this, it helps me out beyond words can express. And hey, we're on the slow road to 100,000 subscribers, so every little helps. Now let's hop straight into my rankings. Number 8. The Johto Series Once again, let me emphasise that I don't dislike any series. Even though Johto is ranked as the worst one in my opinion, I still have a lot of love for it. I think the Ash, Misty and Brock trio were at their peak in this series. Ash Ketchum himself was more mature than he was in Kanto, and he was beginning to put his all into his training with his Pokemon. Brock was more helpful than ever, and thankfully wasn't quite as creepy at times as he was in Kanto. And Misty finally received some character development and some focus, which was exactly what she deserved. Ash's Johto Pokemon were really good too, I loved Totodile's comedy, Bayleaf's crush on Ash, and Cyndaquil going from timid to confident. I do wish Noctowl and Heracross had some more focus though. There were some really great story arcs in the Johto series, from the Lavatar arc to the Lugia arc to the World Cup arc, and to what's in my opinion, a fantastic Pokemon League arc. The Johto series also had a lot of comedy, and gave the spotlight to some really great characters, like Richie, and Casey, and Macy, and Harrison, and of course, Gary Oak himself was handled excellently in this series. I loved his rivalry with Ash in Johto. So in contrast, these are the reasons that I ranked the Johto series as the worst. First off, as I'm sure you're all expecting, the amount of filler episodes in this series was abysmal. There were so, so, so many, and to be honest, not all of them were that great, so it is a bit of a chore to rewatch this series. Secondly, I think that Ash bringing his Kanto Pokemon along for half of the Johto journey really detrimented the development of his new Johto Pokemon. And finally, I think the Johto series kind of lost a bit of the charm that the Kanto series had. But regardless, overall, I still really like the Johto series. Number 7. The Orange Islands series. 
The Orange Islands arc was super short and it's definitely a stretch to consider it its own series, but I really, really adored it. The highlight of this series to me was Ash's character development. After generally being inexperienced and immature in Kanto, the Orange Islands was Ash's opportunity to bond more with his Pokemon and truly focus on becoming a better trainer. And boy did Ash deliver. The way that Ash grew as a character in the Orange Islands was phenomenal. And he finally got Charizard to obey him, which was massive. I loved how different gym battles were in this series, and I really enjoyed Ash's Lapras' story arc too. Finally, Tracy, in my opinion, is incredibly underrated. I honestly love his character, and I know a lot of people find him to be quite boring, but I really found him to be quite endearing and refreshing because he felt so normal and grounded, which is quite uncommon in this series. The reason this series ranks so low on the list is because it was super short and realistically only existed to buy time until the Gold and Silver games released. It's not really too memorable, and it didn't really have quite as much charm as Kanto, but I still loved this little trip to the Orange Islands, despite all of that. Number 6. The Sun and Moon series. I know this is going to be a really controversial ranking, but let me just reiterate, I still really like the Sun and Moon series. I genuinely do. I think it was such a refreshing change for Ash to do something completely different after so many seasons of competing in gym battles. Ash's Pokemon received so much focus in this series, with each of them having awesome development arcs. The cast of characters was mostly awesome, with the standouts for me being Kiawe and Gladion. I loved Kiawe's character, and I loved Gladion's development. In general, I loved how laid back and relaxing the Sun and Moon series was, but despite that tone, it still smashed out of the park when dealing with more serious storylines too. And some of the animation in this series was stunningly incredible. The vibes of Alola were exquisite and really made me wish the Pokemon world was real more than any other series. Ash was so powerful too, finally managing to win a Pokemon League. And overall, this series was just so much fun. For me though, there's a few reasons that I ranked the Sun and Moon series as number 6. I'm gonna be totally frank with you, maybe this point is completely overdone by now, but I just could not get on board with how the series changed Ash, both in terms of his character design and also his manner of acting. I also really wished that the cast received more character development, because to me it only really feel like Lily and Gladion received anything significant. Kiawe, Lana, Mallow and Sophocles all deserved much more time to shine in my opinion. Also, I kind of like the Pokemon anime when the characters are going on journeys and discovering new places, and I know there was some of that in the Sun and Moon series too, but a lot of it felt quite stationary to me, it was all in the same place. But overall, I still thought that Sun and Moon was a fantastic series, and a major breath of fresh air after the same formula for many years. It is worth noting though that when I watched the Sun and Moon series, I was slightly losing interest in the overall anime, so maybe that really influenced my overall impression of the series. I'm definitely hoping to re-watch it soon, so I can hopefully give it another chance. Number 5. The Kanto Series Wow, the Kanto Series, where everything began. Man, I cannot get enough of this series. In terms of charm and personality, this series was the best of them all. There's just something about this series that feels so raw and unfiltered and just crazy really. The series felt like it set no rules, it just did what it wanted, when it wanted. A lot of people dislike this series when watching it nowadays because they compare it to the structure and the standards of the many series after it. But to be honest, I feel like the Kanto series is one that you really mostly appreciate when you watch it while growing up. It is so different to the show nowadays in every single way. The gym battles aren't really battles most of the time, the companions had very little focus, the comedy was much more crude and raw, but to me none of that is a bad thing. It was the first ever series, and I don't think it's right to compare the standards of the show's beginning to the standards of the show decades later. 
The 1990s were a very different time, and that is crystal clear when watching this series. But like I said, Ash's Kanto journey just had so much charm and so much personality. It was so much fun and it was so random and wacky and man don't even get me started on the nostalgia. Even the filler episodes were incredible. Ash, Misty and Brock were the most iconic characters ever. And Ash's Kanto Pokemon are just as incredible too. I mean the starter Pokemon are so beloved by everyone. Pikachu is one of the most famous fictional characters in the history of the world because of this series. And Ash's Caterpie is one of my favourite Pokemon of all time. And man, the animation is so charming and memorable. This is where the whole series began, and what a fantastic beginning it was. Number 4. The Advanced Generation Series This series was the series that I mostly grew up with. I remember being a super young kid, watching episodes of Advanced Generation every single week, and falling in love with the world it crafted. Ash's character in Hoenn was brilliant. He had some fantastic moments, and his development in overcoming his cockiness was great. And man, May and Max. These two characters are incredible. Watching May going from being a nervous young girl who wants nothing to do with Pokemon, to basically being a celebrity in the finals of the biggest contest venue in the region, it was amazing to watch. And Max was a character who I could always relate to, because of his childlike wonder for all things Pokemon and for his sibling bond with May. And honestly, May and Max's bond really helped form the foundations of this series, and I loved that. And dude, the comedy was absolutely brilliant. Especially Team Rocket, they were so hilarious in this series. I loved the way that Ash helped to tutor May, and also this series introduced so many incredible side characters. From Drew, to Harley, to even Nikolai. They were so memorable and so entertaining. What I love most about this series is that it really set the standards for the rest of the anime to follow. It began the process of Ash starting fresh in each region, of companions getting just as much focus and development as Ash did, of Ash taking his battling and training much more seriously, of the whole idea of contests and performing, and so much more. Without Advanced Generation setting these standards, the anime would be a completely different show nowadays. And it has all of my respect for that reason. Now, before we move into the top three, let me just say this. It is no word of a lie that I love all three of the top three equally. Seriously, anyone who knows me knows that I go back and forth on my favourite series out of these three literally every other week. I love all three of them so, so, so much for completely different reasons. The next three for me are the peak of the anime, and trying to rank them over each other was genuinely impossible. Because I could wake up tomorrow, and my number three could be my number one, and my number one could be my number two, and my number two could be my number three. So please don't take offence if I don't rank your favourite as number one, because honestly, they are all number one in my opinion. If I could rank the next three as number one, then I would. But that would be a pretty lacklustre video. So, I've forced myself to rank them as much as it pains me. Without further ado, let's get into the top three. Number three, the X and Y series. Wow, where do I begin with this series? I'd guess that the majority of my viewers have X and Y as their favourite series ever, and for great reason. X and Y took the storytelling and character development to a whole new level. Ash was the most mature he had ever been, and had an incredible and serious story arc with Greninja. That had me hyped the entire way through. Serena was one of the best written characters in the entire show, and the way she developed from being aimless and taking from others, to finding a dream that she loved, and wanting to be the one to inspire others. I mean, that character arc inspired me. Clement was hilarious, and I loved how he became more confident throughout the series. And Bonnie was just so precious, and the way she loved and cherished and protected Pokemon was even more precious. The battles were phenomenal, both in terms of writing and animation. 
And there were some fantastic rivals too. I loved how Sawyer was walking in Ash's footsteps, and how their bond played a role in Ash's depression arc. I loved Serena's friendship with Miette, Nini, and Shauna, and Alan to me really felt like a sort of Anakin Skywalker kind of character. And I loved that. The Pokemon League was crazy too, with Ash vs Sawyer and Ash vs Alan being peak battles in the entire series. And dude, don't even get me started on the Team Flare arc. That felt like the most work the writers had ever put into telling a big grand story. It was incredible. Also, the art style of X and Y was absolute peak, and I miss it dearly. I would do anything to have that art style back. I loved the X and Y series so much, it genuinely felt like the most serious and overall well-written series of the entire show to me. To the point that I honestly think only having 150 episodes actually detrimented the series. It easily could have extended to 200 episodes. Maybe if that happened we could have had some more continuity references and character returns which would have improved the series even more. The only reason that this is number three is because I absolutely adore the light-hearted and comedic nature of the next two picks in this video. For me, Pokemon is such a fun way to just relax and have fun and laugh and forget about everything in the real world. I just kind of wish the X and Y series had a tiny, tiny, tiny bit more comedy and light-heartedness. It definitely had some, but I wanted a tiny bit more. But I know that's probably an unpopular opinion, most people loved how serious it was. But yeah, the X and Y series was absolutely phenomenal. Number 2. The Black and White series. You heard me right, I'm not afraid of going against the popular opinion in this community. The Black and White series is incredible and I absolutely love it. For too long, Black and White fans have been ridiculed or insulted for liking this series. The Black and White series is special, and honestly, it was incredibly close to being number one on this list. So where do I even begin? First of all, let's talk about the characters. Everyone hates on Ash in this series for being dumb or for being reset, but to be honest, this really is not as bad as people make it out to be. Ash Ketchum is still Ash Ketchum. He still has great battling skills, he still loves Pokemon, he still enjoys traveling and bonding with his friends. As a matter of fact, I'd honestly argue that this Ash Ketchum is one of the most enjoyable and fun to watch of all of them. He genuinely only had a few moments that were questionable, but most of them weren't that serious and were more just for comedic purposes. The supposed reset has really been exaggerated over the years. Iris is an exceptional character, with really solid and deep-rooted development and a great backstory. And her Pokemon are awesome too. Silen is the most entertaining dude ever. And man, the rivals, don't even get me started, the rivals are on a whole nother level. Georgia, Burgundy and Bianca are absolute comedy gold. They are so entertaining and I think they're all incredible. And Trip has so much going for himself too. From his backstory, to his interactions with Ash, to his admiration for Alder, he is not a Paul ripoff at all. He's not a cheap version of Paul or a failure in comparison to Paul. They are two completely different characters. They are nothing alike. They are really not similar in terms of attitude or backstory or personality or motivations, or interactions with the characters around them, and the sooner we move away from Trip supposedly being a Paul ripoff, the sooner that people will begin to appreciate his character for what it is. And man, the group of Pokemon in black and white is the best of all time if you ask me. Ash's Pokemon in particular were just incredible, and some of my favourites ever are in this series. Like Oshawott, Scraggy, Levani, and Crocodile. So now that we've covered all of the main characters, what about everything else? To me, Black and White was the most fun and entertaining series of all of them. Every episode was so bright and light-hearted and comedic, and much of this was because of the incredibly colourful cast of characters. Seriously, the series might be called Black and White, but the characters in this series have never been so colourful. 
But even with those light-hearted elements, the black and white series also absolutely nails the serious stories too. There were so many good villain arcs in this series. And also the tournament arcs were so good. They should have continued in every single series. And also the amount of continuity to the seasons that came before it was incredible. A lot of people hate this series because of its battles, but really, most of its battles were absolutely fine. There's just the odd few that weren't great, and those have kind of been exaggerated to insult the entire series. And besides, the Black and White series was never focused on battles, like the other series are. Black and White is way more focused on travelling, fun, and friendship. And I absolutely adored that. It was so refreshing for battles to take a slight back seat, so that the characters and the journey could be the main focus. For me, Black and White is a series that I could just re-watch a million times over, because it's just so much fun. Black and White is a wonderful series, and I hope that me sharing my thoughts in this video will at least make some of you go and re-watch it, or watch it for the first time, and give it a real chance with an open mind. And also, just a quick note real quick, I know that the Black and White series is not perfect. It obviously has some flaws, like some of the writing in the Pokemon League is a little less than desirable. I'm very aware of that, and I agree that some elements could have been improved. But for me, I still had so, so, so much fun watching the series, regardless of those issues. Those few flaws didn't detract from how much I enjoyed the series. I can see past the issues because I just had so much fun with the show. And now, number one, the best Pokemon anime series of them all in my opinion, is... The Diamond and Pearl series. Man, the Diamond and Pearl series. This series was when I really became a Pokemon stan when I was younger. And no matter what seasons follow it, something about the Diamond and Pearl series just feels so special to me. In my opinion, Diamond and Pearl is just the most complete series of them all. It took everything from the original series and Advanced Generation and just completely perfected the formula. Ash was at his absolute peak here, having the perfect blend of his fun personality and his incredible battling skills. Dawn was basically a co-protagonist, and received so much focus, and so much character development, and I feel like her path was treated just as seriously as Ash's was. Brock may not have been the most necessary character in the series, but I did love that he had an overarching role in the story with Yuxi, and that he found a new dream too, to be a Pokemon Doctor. Also, the rivals in this series were something else. Barry was so entertaining, Conway was creepy but hilarious, Nando was so fun and interesting, Zoe was a brilliant mentor to Dawn, Kenny was a great challenge to Dawn and pushed her to greatness in both contests and in their friendship, and even Ursula was a memorable villain. And of course I'm forgetting one aren't I? The man himself, Paul. Paul was on another level. The way that his and Ash's rivalry went far beyond just battling and really entered the realm of clashing ideologies was just exceptional. To me, nothing in the entire anime has ever beaten their rivalry, and nothing in the entire anime has made me feel what their final showdown made me feel. And wow, Ash's Pokemon too. Infernape, in my opinion, is Ash's best written Pokemon ever. I love that he was the complete centre of Ash and Paul's rivalry. And the rest of the team, especially Buizel and Gliscor, are just some of my favourites ever too. The overall writing of the Diamond and Pearl series was phenomenal. It's the only series, to me, that can rival the storytelling and the character development of X and Y. It was seriously fantastic. And the world building of the Sinnoh region was flawless in this series. Every gym leader, every Elite Four member, and the champion were all established and had important roles in the series. And the legends Dialga, Palkia, Giratina, and Arceus were handled incredibly well. In my opinion, the Diamond and Pearl series is the best example of a perfect Pokemon series. That's not to say that it is perfect, because nothing is perfect. 
but I feel like Diamond and Pearl gets the closest out of any series to being the perfect Pokemon series. It has exceptional characters, storytelling, writing, comedy, character development, story arcs, movies, music, and so much more. This series is truly something else, and if we ever get a series in the future that's even close to the greatness of Diamond and Pearl, then we are truly blessed if you ask me. So there we have it. That was every series of the Pokemon anime ranked from worst to best, in my opinion of course. Like I said before, I love every single series. I love those at the bottom of the list, and I especially love those at the top of the list. For me, X and Y, Black and White, and Diamond and Pearl are honestly equal in terms of greatness. X and Y had the best storytelling and writing ever, Black and White was just so light-hearted and fun to watch, and Diamond and Pearl was the absolute perfect culmination and conclusion to everything that came before it. I adore those three series with every fibre of my being, and if I could, I would rank them all as number one. But like I said, that would be a pretty lacklustre ranking video. Remember, these were just my opinions. It is perfectly okay for you to disagree with me, as long as you're respectful about it. Let me know how you would rank every Pokemon anime series in the comments below. I cannot wait to see how different everyone's rankings are. I put so much time and thought into this video, as I'm sure you can tell by the video's length, so be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed. We're on the road to 100,000 subscribers, and that is absolutely crazy to me, but a good kind of crazy. So I would really, really, really appreciate your help to get us there. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I'll catch you all in the next one.